all of you coming. We had a great turnout, and we just appreciate it so much. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Dawn Forbes. I have been an entertainer in Macon now for about 12 years, and I performed mainly at Club Synergy for the last several years, until I retired about two years ago. Um, Edric honored me today by asking me to uh, MC the festivities and the state say a speech, so I really appreciate the opportunity to do this. I would like to say thank you again for taking your time to come and support equal rights for gay people. I would also like to thank Edric Floyd of PFLAG for his tireless efforts in putting this rally together. Thank you also. Yes, thank you. Thank you also to Phil Colmer and Rob Apsley for getting our permit. From what I understand, Jack Jenkins at Dozier Law Firm actually did this pro bono for us. So we'd like to thank them as well. We would also like to thank PFLAG and Georgia Equality for being here today and supporting this rally. And we are here to celebrate the accomplishments we have already achieved in the gay community and to rally support for those goals we have not yet reached. We are also here to honor two very special people who were brave enough to stand up for gay rights in a public setting. We owe them our respect and our gratitude. One of our honorees today is Derek Martin. Inspired by a lesbian student in Mississippi, Derek, who lives in Cochran, Georgia, and attends Blakely County High School, asked his principal if he could bring his boyfriend to the prom this year. His principal consulted with the Board of Education and they saw nothing in their bylaws that prevented anyone from bringing a, a same-sex date. Therefore, Derek was told he could bring his boyfriend to prom, but as a result, some Blakely High students are now refusing to attend the prom because of Derek. These students held a rally to this effect recently in Cochrane. There have also been rumors to hold an alternate prom as a result. We in the gay community see this as a positive effort on Derek's part, however, and we applaud his courageousness. We are also here to honor Adam Braswell, also known as Deanna Sage. Deanna is a local celebrity who has performed as a female impersonator, also mainly at Club Synergy, for many years, and she has donated her time to helping many charities and benefits along the way. She was recently invited to participate in a Cherry Blossom Fashion Show event in drag and as her stage persona, Deanna Sage. This fueled a lot of public controversy, but Deanna held her head high and went through with the fashion show anyway, which ended up being a huge success. Yeah. We are very proud to have someone like Deanna to represent us. Edric asked me today to speak about my personal experiences with prejudice in a small town setting. I grew up in Eastman, Georgia, which is about 17 miles south of where Derek lives in Cochran. After graduating from Dodge County High School in 1992, I also lived in Cochran for a short time and attended college there. I have seen firsthand the kind of prejudice against gays that goes on in these small towns, and I have personally experienced it in my trips back there to visit my family. Just the other day, in fact, I was in Eastman visiting my great-grandmother for her 95th birthday at the nursing home. While there, I ran into an old friend of mine, and she asked me if I would come sing at her upcoming wedding. Her fiancé's reaction was, a lesbian sing at our wedding? The church is going to burn down. My response to him was simply, you know, God loves me too. Because <laughs> he does. I feel the need to point out, however, that intolerance in these small towns is not just directed at gays. I remember when I started band in fifth grade and when I indicated that I wanted to play drums, I was told that I would not be allowed to because I was a girl. So I had to settle for playing clarinet instead. Now females are allowed to play drums in these schools. When I was in high school and girls showed an interest in joining the football team, they were told that girls could not join the, boys, the boys' football team because it was too dangerous, but that they were welcome to start their own powder puff team. Several years later, however, a girl was finally allowed to join the boys' football team and she never sustained any serious injuries. 
I also remember that when I was in high school, blacks and whites who dated each other were very severely frowned upon. It was simply not done back in those days in our town. Now, interracial dating and marriage are commonplace. There were a lot of things that were not done back then, but they've changed, and they will continue to change with our help and determination. As a gay community, it is our duty to fight for equal rights, not for gay rights, but for equal rights under the Constitution of the United States. We are not asking for special rights, but for the same rights that are offered to heterosexuals in this country. In order to do that, however, we must all band together and become active in this battle. A good friend of mine, Casey Bollier, who will speak later today, taught me many years ago that when it comes time to stand up for what you believe in, everyone must put aside their personal feelings and beliefs and agendas and be unified as one group if we hope to accomplish anything. That lesson has stuck with me over the years, and I think it is a valuable lesson for all of us. If we hope to ever establish social equality for gays, we must work together toward a common goal. Women had to fight for equal rights. African Americans had to fight for equal rights. It is now time for gay people to fight for our equal rights. The fact that we now have an African American as President of the United States and he's trying to gain support for the repeal of the don't ask, don't tell policy in our military is a huge indication that the world is going in a different direction. And as far as I'm concerned, this is a very good thing. We simply cannot rest until the goal of social equality is accomplished. I encourage all gay people to be proud of who you are. Come out to your friends and family and co-workers. It is up to us to show the, the world that homosexuality is normal and common. We must help others understand that we don't choose to be gay any more than we choose our height or what hair color we're born with. Scientific studies have shown that homosexuality is in fact biological. Though this information is hard for some individuals to accept, even psychology textbooks are now teaching that most gay people are actually born gay and that homosexuality is genetic. I would also like to point out that when you think about it logically, who would actually choose to be gay? Who would choose a life of persecution and hate and intolerance? Who would choose to live a life of fear and the constant threat of physical harm or even death simply because we're different? I ask those who protest against us to really think about that for a moment. Because I'm here to tell you, we do not enjoy being constantly degraded and persecuted. But we are who we are, and we withstand it for a small chance at being happy in this life. It takes an enormous amount of courage to be gay and out of the closet and proud of who you are. for individuals to share their opinions, even if they are different from ours. But it is not okay to hate. Hatred is never an acceptable option for any community. It is also not okay to base your beliefs on ignorance or fear. And it is certainly not okay to persecute anyone in the name of God. Sorry, I got a little emotional there. I leave you with one of my favorite quotes from Mother Teresa. She said, if we have no peace, it is because we have forgotten that we belong to each other. I believe that we were all put on this earth to love one another, help each other, and show kindness to all people. It is possible to stand up to those who would persecute us while maintaining our integrity and dignity. It is possible to build a world where skin color, religious preference, and sexual orientation no longer matter. A world where all people are loved and accepted for who they are. I challenge each and every one of you today to take a stand and work together to help build that world. Thank you for taking the time to join us in this cause.